Testing, testing, can you hear me? Hi there fellow science enthusiasts, my name is Ram Kumar and welcome to another episode of 300 Seconds of Science. Today we will discuss how hearing people perceive and make sense of sound. After we understand how this process works, we can talk about one common way the ability to hear can be damaged, namely how noise-induced hearing loss is caused and how it can be prevented. The process of how we perceive sound can be broken down into a few important steps. I'm showing you the first step right now. As I am talking to you, my voice box is what is helping me produce sound waves, which you can identify as my voice. More specifically, there are two vocal cords that are stretched across my voice box with a narrow slit between them for the air to pass through. Now when my lungs force air through the slit, the vocal cords vibrate, thus creating sound waves. These sound waves that are created first hit your pinna. The pinna is part of your outer ear and is made of rigid cartilage covered by skin. After hitting the pinna, the sound waves are then funneled into an external auditory canal, a short tube-like structure that ends at the eardrum, also known as the tympanic membrane. Once the sound waves hit your eardrum, your eardrum transfers these vibrations to three minuscule bones located in the middle ear. These three bones are called the malus, incus, and stapes and they are essential in the process because they amplify the sound vibration. As you can see, the vibrations first hit the malus, then the incus, and lastly, the stapes. After the sound is amplified by all three bones, the sound vibrations are sent to the cochlea. The cochlea is a hollow, spiral-shaped bone that is found in the inner ear, and it contains an elastic partition called the base layer membrane, which splits the cochlea into an upper and lower part. You can remember the name base layer membrane because it serves as the base or the ground upon which the vital hearing structures are located. All these vibrations cause the fluid within the cochlea to ripple, and as a result, a traveling wave forms along the base layer membrane. Hair cells, which are sensory cells sitting on top of the base layer membrane, ride the wave. As the hair cells move up and down, even tinier hair-like projections on top of the hair cells, known as stereocilia, bump against the overlying structure and bend. This bend causes pore-like channels at the tips of the stereocilia to open up, allowing chemicals to rush into the cells. The rush of chemicals into the cells causes an electrical signal to be dispersed. The auditory nerve carries this electrical signal to the brain where it is converted into a sound that we can recognize and understand. Some of you may already know that as we age, hearing can become progressively weakened. However, hearing loss can occur in young people too especially in the form of noise-induced hearing loss. Perhaps you've never heard of noise-induced hearing loss? Well, noise-induced hearing loss is pretty much what it sounds like. It occurs when loud noises destroy certain structures in the inner ear. More specifically, excess noise can kill hair cells in the inner ear. And once these hair cells die, they cannot grow back. This means that sound vibrations in the cochlea will not be converted into electrical signals for the brain to make sense of, resulting in a loss of hearing. It is important to know that people in certain professions are more prone to developing noise-induced hearing loss. Some of these professions include mining, carpentry, construction, and oil and gas extraction. In addition, noise-induced hearing loss can be caused from extended periods of listening to music at high volume with headphones or attending concerts. However, there are steps you can take to prevent noise-induced hearing loss and they are simple. These steps include avoiding and limiting exposure to loud sounds, reducing the volume of music systems, and using hearing protection devices when it is not possible to avoid exposure to loud noises. Also, experts suggest that an individual should take a hearing exam at least every three years. By taking a hearing test every three years, your audiologist might be able to catch any signs that indicate noise-induced hearing loss. That's about all we have for this episode of 300 Seconds of Science. Thanks for listening to me. If you want to hear more awesome content like this, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and give us some love on Instagram. All at ZTV, 300 Seconds of Science. This program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV, make media, make a difference.